sometimes the simplest type of pellet may be, you know, the best option. You don't need something crazy fancy um, sometimes, depending on your goals and depending on your nutritionist formulated. I am Bill Weiss, host of the Dairy uh, Black Belt podcast. My guest today is Addison Carroll. She's a PhD student at University of Nebraska at Lincoln, uh, working under the direction of Dr. Paul Kononoff. Um, she's worked on some interesting projects. There are two, two different projects. First one we're going to talk about is some work she did on, on preference with uh, a robot fed cow. So first, Addison, thank you for coming and welcome to the podcast. Yeah, thank you. Um, well, I guess with for graduate students, I always like to ask the first question is what would you graduate? What, what are your future plans? Yeah. So for me personally, I really enjoy the science and research side of things. However, uh, the directionality of industry or academia, I'm still trying to figure that out. Okay. A, lot, a lot of students have that that quandary. Um, like I said we're going to talk about a paper you published in, in JDS Communications and we're for Listeners, that's a publication of Journal Dairy Science, but it publishes short and very focused papers. Again, this was on preference of robot fed cows. First of all, why did you do this experiment? Yeah, so the the interesting thing about this experiment is it was really born out of necessity from a farmer. So what had happened is we were in really good communication with a robotic farm here in Nebraska, and their manager came to us and said, hey, we don't really like our pellet. Can you give us some options and some thoughts about what we can do to maybe make it better? And that was actually for a rations class with Paul. And then we ended up formulating these pellets and decided to make it a full time experiment. So on the treatments, what all did you what, what all did you compare? Yeah, so our first treatment was a corn gluten pellet, uh, corn gluten feed pellet. Um, the second one was one with characteristics that we thought were very palatable to animals, including distillers grains, oregano, and cane molasses. The next one kind of represented a generalized concentrate mix, which had the vitamin and mineral in it. And then our last one was a high energy pellet uh, containing about 61% corn grain, so high starch. Okay. And this is was done at a commercial farm or was this done at, at the university? So this was done at the university within our tie stall system. Would you um, uh, be feeding behavior and things there is new to me? How, how do you do? How do you determine what a cow likes to eat? Yeah, so it's a great question. So in these experiments, what we do is we provide the animal four individual tubs of each treatment in a randomized order. And that animal is given the opportunity to eat on those um, ingredients for one hour or until one pellet is fully consumed. And that's how we determine what they like. So either full consumption or the most consumed within that one hour time frame. And is there, you know, do cows have a have a memory in other words if you were offer offer something they've already been eaten would they just naturally prefer that or yeah i think that's a really interesting question that we still have in terms of our thought pattern here and so with that um we kind of in this experiment said that you know these animals had been exposed to a majority of the ingredients within each of the pellets i think the only ingredient that those animals hadn't been previously exposed to was the oregano and and for for the listeners uh, describe the cows you used a little bit on how the stage of lactation production levels, et cetera. Yeah. So these were some later lactation Jersey cows. I can't exactly remember the exact production level, but they were starting to taper down. Okay. And, and in, you know, in uh, robots, they're programmed to eat a certain amount of pellets. Do you control that in these studies and, or, or how do you, do you just let them eat as much as they want where they could actually get sick or something? No. So we give them a half a kilogram of pellets within each of the tubs. Okay. Okay. And then just see which one they get, go, get through first. Yes. So what, what, what did you find basically, I guess? Yeah. So what we observed was really interesting to us. Um, we observed that they really preferred that corn gluten pellet the most, um, even before the ingredients that we thought were the most palatable to these animals, which was the second pellet choice. And then after that, we observed the concentrate mix was third and then fourth was the high starch energy pellet and, and these were fed as pellets not 
you didn't grind them or anything like that. They yep. were fed as pellets. pellets. Was there a difference in, you know, real hard pellets or real soft pellets that might make an effect other than just taste? So was there differences in the physical attributes of the pellets? Yeah, so that concentrate mix pellet was probably our weakest pellet because it did have that vitamin and mineral mix. Uh, there were some differences among the treatments in terms of, of pellet hardness. Um, however, it wasn't anything crazy, like it was absolutely crumbling as soon as you grabbed it. So with the different, the, the corn gluten meal feed, not meal, corn gluten feed pellet, was substantially more preferred. It wasn't even close from the data. Yep. You, do you think in the, the field the, this preference will make a difference or is it just they like it better, but they would have ate enough of everything else as well? Or is there, is there a benefit to something that, that is that preferred? Yeah. So I think, um, you know, one of the benefits of seeing that this pellet was the most preferred is the fact that this pellet was our cheapest um, easiest to get, at least here in the Midwest, and a single ingredient. And so with that, you know, it says sometimes simplicity is is kind of nice um, in these pellets. And then also, um, like, we need to be cognizant of the ingredients that are going into these pellets because animals do have have a preference. You know, normally we do think of things in terms of the animals will just eat whatever we put in front of her, but there may be something to what she actually likes to consume. And I'm assuming, again, I'm no expert on robots, but they're only, they have to eat a fair amount in a, in a short period of time or a relatively short mm -hmm. period of time. So preference may have a much bigger effect on these cows than say a TMR where they can eat all, all day on it. Correct. So, and I guess the bottom line then, what, what would be the take home message to, to robot producers or people who work with robot farms? Yeah, so I think the big take home is sometimes the simplest type of pellet may be, you know, the best option. You don't need something crazy fancy um, sometimes, depending on your goals and depending on your nutritionist formulated. Um, and then also, you know, moving forward, we need to think maybe about what these cows are, are liking to eat in order to better feed them to visit the robot. Introducing Ultrasorb R3.0, Volac's comprehensive and complete solution to reduce the negative impact of naturally occurring toxins on ruminants. Ultrasorb R3.0 is a species-specific product designed to mitigate the effects of specific mycotoxins in the gastrointestinal tract of ruminants. Ultrasorb R3.0 also offers lipopolysaccharides binding capabilities. Endotoxins such as LPS can contribute to inflammation in ruminants with energy partitioned to mount an immune response instead of production. Learn more about Ultrasorb R3.0 at volac.com. And then just to finish up, then if this is a single ingredient pellet, basically, then the PMR or the, the rest of it would have to contain the vitamins and minerals, some starch, et cetera. So this would be the, the, the PMR would have to be supplemented differently than if this pellet was more of a complete, complete type pellet. Yep, correct. All right. Well, thanks. I, I've learned a lot. This is an area I don't know very much about. So th yeah. thank you for joining us today. Yeah, no problem. Thank you.